Using shortcut keys in Blender can be really helpful for speeding up your workflow. And in this video, I'm going to show you the slightly lesser known ones so you can start modeling with supersonic speed. If you like what I do, then check out the playlist in the description and my website for more great content. So first of all, moving the 3D cursor, of course, shift right click to move the 3D cursor, but you can also press shift S to get this pie menu. Now pie menus are great because you can quickly move the mouse across to whichever one you want. And the ones I use the most are cursor to world origin and cursor to selected. So cursor to world origin will obviously bring it to the middle. Let's say I had my cube selected in edit mode and had one of these verts selected and then press shift Z, cursor to selected. That could be really helpful for adding objects in specific places such as this. So if I go back into object mode, shift A of course is the add menu, which you can also find up here. But if I press shift A again, you can press numbers for each of these. So one, two, and three. So if I press one, it goes to the mesh menu. And then I can press, let's say four for the UV sphere. It's not something I use very often. I find I just move my mouse into position. But you can see that my UV sphere has appeared exactly where that vertex is, showing the usefulness of cursor to selected. Another useful case for this, if I click on my default cube, go into edit mode and choose a different vertex, shift S, cursor to selected. I can then go back into object mode, right click, and I've got my set origin menu, and I can go across to origin to 3D cursor. So with my object origin at that point, I could maybe set up a mirror across that origin, as you can see there. But I'll undo those steps for now. And if I right click, you can reset your origin, origin to geometry, and that will go to the center of the mass again, as you can see there. The next one is the Z key or Z key if you're American. And that gives us our shading options. So you can jump from wireframe back to solid mode, rendered mode if you like, and so forth. X-ray mode, however, isn't in that pie menu and you need to press Alt Z and Alt Z again to come out. Now I'm sure you know that tab will take you into edit mode. So the different modes are up here, but you can also hold down control tab and move your mouse to move into something like sculpt mode. Whilst we're in sculpt mode for our UV sphere, the most common keyboard shortcuts I use here are shift R to get my remesh voxels, which you can also find up here in voxel size. And for the remesh button, it's control R. So shift R to set your voxel size and then control R to actually apply that. And you can see that's been applied. Another really useful one in sculpt mode and texture painting mode is Alt Q will change between the objects. And you can see they highlight kind of ready pink. So on the cube, I can press Shift R for the remesh voxels and then Control R to remesh it. Let's go back to object mode. So that's Control Tab and back to object mode. Another tool I use an awful lot is the transform pivot points. For me, this is definitely essential to get the keyboard shortcut into your brain. And it can be a pain jumping between these different options. The keyboard shortcut for that is the greater than key. So let's go to individual origins, select both of these and scale them down. And now we've got individual origins, then the greater than key. And let's try the default, which is median point, and then scale them. And we're scaling from the middle of the two. So that's the greater than key. The less than key is the orientation menu, which you can also find up here. The default being global, of course. So when I press G, then X, that will move in the global X. But if I press the less than key, we can go to the view. And then if I press G, then X, it's the X axis in alignment with my viewport camera. So G, then Y goes up and down and G, then Z back and forth. And I can press the less than key, go back to global view, G, then Y, and I'm back to default. The very last one is the tilde key that gives you your different viewport options, which you can also find in view and the viewpoint. You also have in that option, the view selected. So that will frame the selected objects. And that's really useful if you haven't got a numpad. The only other frustration, if you haven't got a numpad, if I go to the view menu and local view, which I use all the time is numpad forward slash. So you might want to right click and save that to your quick favorites. So if I click on add to quick favorites, then press Q and you can see there's toggle local view there. So if I select this one, Q toggle local view, I'm now in local view for that object. And that basically isolates the object. So hopefully there you've got a few useful shortcuts to really speed up your workflow and get you modeling really quickly. I recommend you try them out to get used to them and see which ones are useful to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.